February is the month of love and so I will be reading pretty much only romances this month. Is that any different from the other months in the past few months? Probably not because I have been on a romance kick. I feel like it is becoming my main genre and I honestly love that for me. <laughs> so I'm going to go through the different genres that I'll be reading this month because it's a few different types of subgenres of romance and before I want to get into this TBR I do want to mention that I'm trying to make my TBRs like more loose so that I can read beyond them every month. Um, it seemed to work really well in January. I actually finished my January TBR um, which I'm really excited about. I want to continue that so I'm gonna like try and just do like the bare minimum of what I want to read each month and then go from there. We'll have a great time. So first up is my historical romance for the month and this is a book that I have been meaning to read and I'm going to read because season two is coming out. So yes, it is The Duke and I by Julia Quinn, which is the first in the Bridgerton series. And my idea is to read book two before season two comes out next month. And then in the future, I'm gonna read the book like right before the season. So a lot of you probably know the plot of this book if you have watched the show, which I did watch the show. So I do wanna read the book, even though I heard the show might be better, I will leave that up to my own judgment. <sighs> Basically, Daphne is a young lady who is looking to secure a husband in Regency London, and sh but she has issues playing the games of love with the eligible bachelors because she's a little bit prickly. Then we have Duke Simon Bassett, aka the Duke of Hastings, and he has recently returned from abroad and he is determined to shun society and marriage. However, he's a young eligible Duke, so ladies are throwing themselves at him. Now he is best friends with Daphne's brother and so they kind of enter into an arrangement to have a fake courtship to help both of them, Simon, so that he gets all these ravenous young ladies off of his back and, and Daphne to appear more desirable to other eligible young bachelors that may want to marry her and it goes from there. I mean, I love the show. I'm interested to see how the book goes and continue on with the series and compare the book to the show and just enjoy all aspects of the story. Next, we have my paperback rom-coms as I like to call them, like my traditionally published rom-coms. So of course, for traditionally published romances, I do have an arc that I need to read first and I wanna get a review out before it arrives on shelves and that is Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. This is the second in her Bellinger Sisters series, the first one being It Happened One Summer and now we are following Piper's sister Hannah who is really into music and producing and she works in Hollywood and then we have Fox who is like the playboy fisherman and he basically has never had a friendship with a woman and so in the first book him and Hannah strike up a friendship. Like they're actually friends. Yeah, because he's a playboy and he's never had a friendship with a woman. Mm -hmm. However, Hannah comes to town for work and she crashes in Fox's spare bedroom. Um, she's trying to catch the eye of her coworker, but the more time she spends with Fox, the more that she is blurring the line between friendship and flirtation. And ugh, it just sounds so good. We have like the forced proximity, friends to lovers. Love it. I just love like the feel of these romances. Like I just love love the feel. Also this starts off with like text messages which I think is so fun. I'm a big Tessa Bailey fan so I'm so excited to be reading this and continuing on with her works. So I do have a decent amount of paperback romances that I need to get through. So I'm going to be continuing on with a series that I bought all of them because I love the first one so much and that is the Brown Sister Trilogy. So this month I'll be reading Take a Hint Danny Brown and Actor Age Eve Brown. These are by Talia Hibbert who is wonderful. Loved Chloe Brown so much. It had such really good chronic illness representation and a really fun romance. So the first one is Take a Hint Danny Brown. Danny Brown is working towards getting her PhD and it's a romance between her and brooding bodyguard Zafir when he rescues her from a workplace fire drill the clip of them goes viral and everyone on the internet is shipping them. So they decide to fake a romance for publicity so that he can get some traction for a charity that he is really involved in and um yeah that sounds so fun. Then we have actor age Eve Brown which is about the youngest brown sister Eve and basically she is chaotic and accidentally breaks the arm of this bed and breakfast owner and so in order to make up for it she decides to work for him at his bed and breakfast. 
then things go from there very exciting i mean i don't know these books just give me all like the feels the butterflies just talking about their plots and stuff um i'm really excited to be finally finishing this trilogy and reading some more books off my physical tbr because that is a goal of mine this year and also to not buy as many books <laughs> Okay, now moving on to my adult fantasy of the month, which I'm gonna kind of consider on the lines of fantasy romance, but it's more like an adult fantasy with romance, whereas fantasy romance like focuses on the romance, you know what I mean? Okay, anyways, it's House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J. Mass, which is of course the sequel to House of Earth and Blood. Look at this beauty. As you know, I'm a big Sarah J. Mass fan. Uh, Crescent City series, aka House of Earth and Blood, which is the first one, follows Bryce Quinlan, who is half fae. She works in an art gallery by day and is a party girl by night, and she's kind of just like living her best life with her werewolf BFF Danica when Danica is murdered and Bryce witnesses this murder. They thought they had locked up the killer behind bars, but then a series of similar killings takes place. So enter Hunt Athelar, who is a fallen angel in service to the archangels. They basically give him the assignment to figure out what is happening with these murderers and since Bryce was a witness to the first set that happened many years ago, they team up to figure out what's going on. Things go from there. It's Sarah J Mass. I'm very excited to continue on with the series because it was just so... It was a really cool series because it was modern but fantasy. So it was like an urban high fantasy, which doesn't make any sense. But it's like a modern world but like completely fantasy creatures are populating the world so it was really cool really immersive fun i'm glad that she finally made the switch completely to the adult genre and i'm just really looking forward to seeing what happens next in the series so now we are moving on to some of my like indie published fantasy romances that i want to read this month and it is also pharaoh feb which is hosted by a fantasy romance author over on instagram i'm not going to be hosting this year like i did last year just because i'm super busy with life and stuff like that but i will be participating and i'll be reading these fantasy romance books as part of that the first fantasy romance that i'm going to be talking about is music of the night by angela j ford this like many of the books that i own was a cover by and i've yet to read it but this is going to be the month fantasy romance february because literally look at it so beautiful i mean like both of the dust jacket and the underneath are beautiful. This is one of two books that are out so far in the Tower Knight's Tale. And this is a Phantom of the Opera meets Beauty and the Beast retelling. Like, if you know me, Phantom owns my heart. I mean, just look at this. After the death of her father, Arya is basically penniless and destitute, and so she's rescued by the Count and moves to his reclusive High Tower. The one feature of the High Tower that brings guests is the theater. Arya wants to avoid an arranged marriage and so she makes a deal with the Count. If she learns to sing for him, she does not have to get married to someone in an arrangement. So she learns to sing and she meets this dark man in a mysterious tower and she begs him to learn the power of song from him. However, the evening reveries of the theater soon become haunted with blood, mystery, and murder. Before I want to get into this TBR, I do want to mention that I'm trying to make my TBRs like more loose so that I can read beyond them every month. Um, it seemed to work really well in January. I actually finished my January TBR, um, which I'm really excited about. I want to continue that. So I'm going to like try and just do like the bare minimum of what I want to read each month and then go from there. Rumors claim that it's the man in the tower responsible for this, but Arya refuses to believe it. Oh my god, it just sounds so good. Like, ugh, fan of the opera. There is a second book in the series, Song of the Dawn. I'm not going to officially put it on my TBR in case I don't get to it, but it is a potential. Song of the Dawn is about a haunted inn, a magical violin, and an intriguing innkeeper. It's supposed to be like haunted and gothic, and it came out in October, so I'm assuming it has that creepy October vibe. So maybe I'll read it then, or maybe I'll read it right after Music of the Night. I don't know, but it's potential. The next book that I want to talk about is Touch of Darkness by Scarlett St. Clair. Ever since I read King of Battle and Blood by her this month, I like I'm absolutely obsessed with her and I want to read all of her books. So I'm going to be starting here at the book that kind of launched her to fame, the Hades and Persephone series, which I love any sort of Hades and Persephone retelling. I am going to be buying physical copies of this, but don't worry, I have a gift card to Barnes & Noble. That's how you hack the system of the book buying ban. Which when I do book buying bans, they're not complete bans because that just never works for myself it's just i try to be like very very conscientious of the books that i am buying and only buy them if they're my most anticipated release and it, or if i'm going to be reading them like immediately after purchase 
Persephone is the goddess of spring, but flowers shrivel at her touch, and Hades is the god of death, but he has a gambling den in the mortal world. Persephone has recently moved to the mortal world and disguised herself as a journalist. After a chance meeting, Persephone finds herself in a contract with Hades. She must create life in the underworld or lose her freedom forever. I mean, it's Hades and Persephone, so I know I'm gonna love it. I am, however, going to be smart and only put the first book on my TBR so I don't feel like I have to read the whole series in one a month, but I would potentially read more than just the one book, just so you know. Okay, and now on to an indie romance that I read the first one in like September, October, and the second one just came out and I loved this first one so much. I'm really excited for the sequel and that is Lord of Embers by C.N. Crawford. The series is called The Demon Queen Trials, which is amazing. The first book is City of Thorns and what's really cool about this world is it does kind of remind me of Crescent City a bit with like modern demon cities but basically what happens is the demons are known to humans and they have their own cities in the mortal world but the mortals cannot enter unless they are going there to like study for university like study magic at their universities. So Rowan's mother was killed by a demon and so she's on the hunt for revenge and looking for a way to enter the demon city. She's trying to get in through studying to get into the university there. She is out one night with her friend at a bar and the Lord of Chaos walks in and mistakes her for the most famous last succubi to exist because they look exactly alike. And so he kidnaps her. But upon realizing that she is mortal, he decides that they are going to con everyone in the demon city into believing that this succubus has returned. And so she has to pretend to be this like demon succubus in order to help him. Uh, Sal Chaos is the Lord of Chaos and in return, he's going to help her like figure out what happened to her mother. And like, it is so good. I loved seeing Rowan go from like being like the shy, anxious human to having to undertake this role to literally like become this like badass demon and I felt like her character really grew and like the tension between our main characters was really good. I'd call this like a 1.5 on the spice scale but I'm like I feel like there's the potential for more spice in the second book just based on the events that happened. It ended on a pretty big cliffhanger so like I'm really excited to read this book because I need to know what happens immediately. Okay, and the last few books that I want to put on my TBR are Sophie Lark because I started reading through her backlist this past month in January and I loved it. I did a Sophie Lark taste test vlog that will be out in the coming weeks. I think it might be the next vlog that I post and I'm really excited for you guys to see it because now I am obsessed with her as an author and I really want to continue on with her Brutal Birthright series which is her modern day mafia series set in Chicago following mainly the Irish and the Italian families but we also get other types of mobs involved like other ethnicity mobs like the polish mob stuff like that so there are six books total i have read the first two so i'm gonna put the next two on my tbr officially but then leaving enough room to like keep reading them especially now that i'm officially like taking the subway to work now so like i have like at least a solid hour of reading on my kindle every day so i feel like i can get through a lot of books so the next book in the series that I need to read is Savage Lover and this one follows Nero who is part of the Italian mob family and he's like basically like the ruthless reckless wild one and the woman in this book is Camille and she's all about cars and they basically bond over their love of cars. After Savage Lover is Bloody Heart, which follows Dante, who is the oldest brother in the Italian Mafia family. And it is a second chance romance. And that is it for my February TBR. I think I've given myself enough wiggle room that I can read all of these and then read more, which is what I love to do. It's what I did in January and I'm just very excited about it. So I hope you enjoyed. Please leave any sort of heart emoji if you have read this far to spread the love in February and comment down below what books you are most excited to be reading this month. Have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.